Hello, um, I am going to do an assignment, uh, another prophetic lesson that I was given today, December the 16th, 2019, and the Holy Spirit said to name it Plagues, and I'm going to read, I'm doing it in the order that I was told to do it, so I'm going to read uh, Revelations, the 16th chapter, and then I'll go from there. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial from the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he should walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them, gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, and such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. These particular plagues that I have spoken of, that I just read about, are for the unrighteous in the earth. These are for all the individuals that uh, take the mark of the beast. If you'll notice, at the beginning, it <clears throat> talks about um, a plague being poured out upon those who have taken the mark of the beast. So the plagues in Revelation 16 are for all those that have taken the mark of the beast. Now, when you go back into Revelations, the, <clears throat> the sixth chapter, and it speaks of the four seals the four horses, the chat verse eight is the combining of the pale horse, I mean the white horse, the red horse, and the black horse, 
only difference is it has two more horses added to it and that's death and hell and so um well actually it has one more horse let me correct myself which is the pale horse the fourth horse which is the pale horse uh it has death and hell following and so the fourth seal is the combining of seals one through three and um death and hell following and so um these are also for the wicked and the unrighteous of the earth too and i'm going to read revelations the sixth chapter and the eighth verse and i looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth and so um the sword is the red horse and with hunger is the black horse and um with death is the pale horse which is the fourth horse and hell follows so um basically it's stating what i had already said now these are also for uh the fourth seal is also for the unrighteous of the earth for the wicked and now we're going to go into the revelations the eighth chapter and revelations the eighth chapter is the seventh seal um the sixth chapter is seals one through six and so when you get to the fourth uh, seal that seal is basically for the unrighteous of the earth and the fifth one is for the martyrs and the sixth one is um, the earthquake and after you get the earthquake and then you're going to go to seal number seven and seal number seven consists of seven trumpets and these seven trumpets are plagues too well there's well there's seven trumpets but they're vows and um these are for the wicked and the unrighteous and those that have taken the mark of the beast to um here let's see so i'm going to read the eighth chapter but i'm not going to start at the beginning i'm going to start at revelations the eighth chapter and the seventh verse the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon upon the earth and the third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up and the second angel sounded and as it were a great mountain burning with fire which is a volcano was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea became blood and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters and the name of the star is called wormwood and the part of and the third part of the waters became wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter and the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars so as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise and i beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpets of the three angels which are yet to sound and 
The fifth angel sounded, and this is the ninth chapter now. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them were given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their foreheads were as it were crowns. On their heads, excuse me, were as it were like crowns, like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and their there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men for five months. And they had a king over them, which is the king angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue he had this name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which, had, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were bound, prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jason, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issue out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor of their thefts. These Trumpet blasts here are also for the unrighteous of the earth. They're also for those that have taken the mark of the beast too. And um, basically, all of this ties in basically with the vows of wrath. Even these trumpets here, all of it ties in with the vows of wrath because it's all for the unrighteous of the earth because God's children are not appointed to his wrath. And so none of these plagues are for the righteous. They're all for the unrighteous. And these are for individuals who refuse to repent in the earth. They refuse to acknowledge uh, God, uh, refuse to accept the death of his son, Jesus, who came here and died on the cross for their sins to give them a chance to be saved so that they may um, reign with Christ 
for eternity and they reject that gift they basically spit on it and they choose to worship the beast they choose to worship satan instead they choose to do um continue in sin continue um refusing to repent and um as you can see it said that they continue to worship false gods um and and continue committing fornication working witchcraft and all this stuff so there there even this was not even enough to make them repent but it was too late anyways but still this lesson is basically showing you that the tribulation, the great tribulation, um, this portion of the tribulation, it's for the wicked. Right now, you have the chance to repent, to turn before it's too late if you do not repent and you do not turn back to God and you come to him according to Acts 2 38 you know you get baptized in Jesus name and you ask him for the gift of the Holy Spirit and by faith you have to believe when you ask for it that he will give it to you and if you are truly in repentance, you will get that. When you ask, he will give it to you. And then it tells you that there are signs that follow that to let you know. Um, there are signs that follow that will let you know that you have it. And um, the speaking in tongues is one of the one of the gifts that, that I don't even care if you do it one time when you first get saved. Some people... If um, they have the gift of tongues, they do it frequently. But there are some that I've known, um, a lot of people that they rarely ever speak in their prayer language. Um, they may do it one time when they first get saved and you may not hear them do it anymore. It's rare, but you can't control speaking in tongues and i'm not talking about this false tonguing that these hypocrites are and, and and are doing that is that's an abomination unto god to speak false tongues you are mocking the holy spirit and god does not want us um speaking it's a sin to even speak against the holy spirit but to mock him that's just as bad um false tonguing it, it's a sin it's a sin. When you speak in tongues, you don't do it. The Holy Spirit does it through you. Every time that I have done it, I could not control it. He did it on his own through me. That is how it works. You cannot false. You can false tongue, but if you're false tonguing, it's a sin and you need to repent of it because it's wrong. A lot of, most people are doing it in ignorance, to be honest with you. But... Um, it is a sin and it is wrong um, to do that. So if you've been doing it or if you are doing it or if you have been doing it or have done it in the past, I suggest you go to God in repentance for it because that is wrong. That is a sin to mock and imitate his Holy Spirit. That's wrong. But um, quickening, um, all who has the Holy Spirit will quicken. Some people do it more frequent than others. I do it very frequently. Um, he it, it, it very frequently. He does it on his own. Uh, if I'm talking to him, sometimes if I think on him, um, sometimes, and then he'll do it sometimes in my sleep or if he's trying to wake me up or if he's trying to tell me, wants to tell me something, whatever. But some people do it more frequently than others. Some people do it only when they're in prayer or in worship with God. And then some people are like me, anytime, all the time, throughout the day, every day, just anytime, very sensitive. Well, that's how I am. But you will have the quickening power because the Bible says the son quickeneth whom he will. That is to let you know that his spirit is alive and it's in you and it moves. 
um, and you'll feel it in your belly. You know, it's like it comes through the back and in the belly. And some people quicken and it quickens other parts of the body. You know, some people get it in. I've seen people have it in their necks, in their leg, um, in their bag, different things. But it's all, everyone feels it in your belly. You will feel that jerk in your belly. So anyways, if you experience any of these symptoms, that's to let you know you have the Holy Spirit. It is not demonic. It is not a demon. Uh, demons do not quicken you. Um, when I did not have the Holy Spirit, I did not quicken. Everyone that I know that does not have it, they do not quicken him. Because demons are dead spirits. They can't quicken. And that's one thing that Satan cannot do. He cannot quicken you. God did not give him that because he's a dead spirit and the Holy Spirit is alive. It can quicken you. So I know I got off track with that. I did not intend to put that in here. I don't, um, the Holy Spirit must have wanted that in here for somebody or several people, but I did not intend to put that in there because this video is about the plagues. <laughs> Anyways, um, but saints and sinners, um, saints, if you're playing, if you're lukewarm, I encourage you to stop. Think, think about these plagues that I read and you don't want to be a part of that. So right now, if you're dabbling this in, you have time to repent and turn from it. Turn from your evil ways that you may be spared from these plagues and for you sinners you need to get right with God. I just told you how to get the Holy Spirit and about getting baptized. And I know you have people disputing about the baptism. That is not up for argument. The scripture says, except ye be born by the water and the spirit, ye cannot enter the kingdom of God. Jesus did not come here to go and get baptized by John and be submerged under water for nothing. The fire of the fire baptism is the Holy Spirit, but the water baptism is the water itself. And if you read in the scripture, it says there are three that bears record in the earth. It says the water, the uh, Holy Spirit, and it says the blood. So there's three, the scripture says that bears record in the earth. If uh, the water was the Holy Spirit, then why would it say there's three? The water, the Holy Spirit, and the blood. The water, the spirit, and the blood. Uh, those are three separate entities, three separate things. So um, don't let anyone tell you different. You have to go underneath that water like Jesus did. He was the example, the full submersion. And... Um, that will complete the process. And so take these things into consideration and repent and um, get yourself right with God before it's too late. And that's all I have for this lesson. Bye.